Now, what we'll do is we'll do another activity, a drawing activity. In, uh, in, uh, basically, it's drawing a bird in few simple steps that will help you identify a bird that you've not seen before. And the first rule is patience. Unlike photography where you can capture a bird in few minutes, drawing requires deep observation. So spend time noticing birds in detail, the shape, the behavior, and so on. Um, I hope you have your pencil and paper ready again. Okay, now when you look at a bird, the range of positions that a bird can assume is limitless. A bird can completely change its appearance by say stretching a long neck to its full extent or folding it back close to the body. A flying bird looks entirely different from a sitting bird. Posture is very first thing that you will capture on the paper when you sketch a bird. Now to do this, you can draw a faint line that indicates the angle of the body from head to tail. If you instead uh, say instead of uh, uh, looking at this angle, if you just start sketching, drawing a bird, say from the beak and you end up with the tail, your end result may not even look like a bird. So what I've done here is I've drawn, a, uh, if you look at the bulbul, the red whiskered bulbul on the right, I've drawn a vertical line running through the body as it is sitting straight up. And on the other hand, the bird on the left, which is the pale bill flower picker, uh, has, has bent in such a way that the axis of the body is horizontal. So, I've, the, so I've, I've drawn like a horizontal line running through it. Now, what, I will, what we will do now is uh, draw a starling, which has a side view or which is like the true angle in which the bird generally holds its body. So if you notice here, I've drawn a diagonal line passing from its head towards its uh, tail. So first thing I would want you to do is uh, draw a line which indicates the bird's posture. So draw a straight line, a diagonal line. Okay, the next step is to represent the body of the bird. So for that, draw an oval. And thirdly, we need to represent the head of the bird. So draw a circle. Now make sure the proportion of the head is relative to the body because some birds have smaller heads in comparison uh, to the body. Now add a line to indicate where the beak will be placed. And then another line to indicate where the tail will be drawn. Okay, now we need to mark the angles roughly where the head meets the, uh, so let me show where the head meets the body here, again, the neck and the body and then where the tail meets the body. So just mark these angles very roughly. Then mark the wings. And then the legs. Now draw the beak and the eye. So note that, so this was the first line that you had drawn, the beak line. The eye is placed above the beak line. Now lastly, you can define the outline of the body. So make a neat outline of the body. Now say if you have seen a bird and you're unable to identify it, so sketching this way will help you describe the bird better and faster than actually written notes. So all you need to do to this sketch is to uh, add some more details 
such as what color so the bird had black in its head and wing and tail and the rest of the body was rose so once you have the sketch and the the little notes that you make uh, you can also add notes such as where it was seen whether it was seen on a branch or or in a water body and then it is easy to uh, get it identified say um you also it's also also important to note down the time date and weather uh, also the place it makes things easier for identification you can also add some notes such as what the bird was doing whether it was foraging uh, resting and um, uh, whether it was seen uh, flying or sitting on the ground or on a tree or a bush so all these details will add up uh, add uh, it's more uh, useful and then you can look at a field guide or can ask an expert to get your bird identified now the advantage also is that this will remain in your journal as a permanent memory and um, the more you practice the more you will get faster and better at sketching birds but if you to make a more detailed sketch of the bird you can take this a little further say you can add details to the wing showing the primary and secondary feathers so you can fill fill up the wing as i've done here you can add some more details to the face i've added some details here i've shown some scapular feathers here and then also on the outline i've suggested some feathers here so you can add uh, those details you can then complete the details of the legs and show where the bird is found here it's on a branch now for those who want to uh, further give details to the bird you can go ahead and fill in with colors and make it look more realistic now remember that birds move constantly and uh, usually some distance away you don't uh, see such detail in birds when you actually watch them outside unless you have a camera or a binocular so uh, painting a realistic looking bird requires tremendous practice as well as good knowledge of birds uh, so uh, to begin with you can start practicing looking at photographs in the initial stages uh and also yeah just watch birds outside to understand their behavior and the shape uh and so on now if you're interested in diving deep into bird art there are several books and online tutorials available um one of the artists that i would like to recommend for bird art is uh, john moir lors you can refer his website now um there are other useful resources that you can uh, look look up uh, so if you'd like to get uh, serious about bird watching and to know more about indian birds and what is happening uh, you can uh, go to bird count india website there are also small uh, uh, articles about for beginners how to start bird watching and other uh, articles or how to differentiate uh, between uh, difficult uh species then if you want to uh, want some uh, photographs for references for you to try out your art activities um you can uh, look uh, go to oriental bird images there are hundreds of images uploaded there then for bird calls zenocanto is a good site yeah and then um, cornell university has the site called bird sleuth where uh, uh it's uh, i mean birdsluth uh, creates innovative resources that uh, actually build science skills uh, in young people while you know in, in uh, inspiring them to explore biodiversity and also gets young people to engage in citizen science pro, uh, projects so that's a very uh, that's a wonderful site to refer to and uh, if you're interested in nature journaling uh, you can look at uh, john moore law's website 
uh, not just to learn how to draw birds, but also other uh, uh, plants and animals. Then for nature stories for children, uh, yes, storyweaver.org.in. And uh, there are several uh, uh, field guides uh, on birds, like we have the Salim Ali field guide or the Inscape, but for beginners, that might be a, a bit overwhelming. So for children or beginners, uh, Birds of India by Martin Woodcock is a good um, field guide because it has limited species as well as nice illustrations. 